Accident. The aero finisher cable broke when landing an airplane. The airplane rushed to the end of the deck and... The work of aviation on an aircraft carrier is a spectacular sight. Airplanes take off and land on its deck in a merry-go-round. It seems that some giant conveyor belt is working. The roar of jet engines, energetic gestures of deck personnel controlling the actions of pilots, drive in a word. Landing is especially interesting. The Steelbird smoothly approaches the aircraft carrier. Here its wheels hit its deck and it quickly rushes forward. But immediately, as if someone invisible pulled the reins, sharply slowing down the multi-ton machine. It was an aero finisher, the cable of which the airplane hooked with its hook during landing. After running a few dozen meters, it stopped. That's it, the flight's over. But what happens if the cable breaks and those invisible but mighty reins are gone? Disaster? Does the airplane fall into the water? Watch this video and you'll find out all this in detail. March 18, 2016, Atlantic. The pilot of an E-2C Hawkeye long-range radar detection aircraft released the flaps with a familiar hand motion and began to gradually retract the throttle, causing the machine to begin its descent. The deck of the aircraft carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower was rapidly increasing in size. Already from the cockpit of the airplane, the cables of the air finisher were visible. The pilot took another look at the control panel with the yellow light on, the tail hook was extended in anticipation of a hook. The E2C gently touched the deck. A moment. A jerk. The hook caught the cable, and then again, suddenly a strong jerk, and the plane at high speed rushed to the edge of the runway, behind which several kilometers deep ocean. The aero finisher cable broke, which immediately whipped the deck with a giant iron whip crippling people. The hands, seemingly independent of the head, performed the movements that had been repeatedly beaten into reflex at numerous training sessions. The throttle handle to the stop, the flap control toggle switch to the lower position, the steering wheel smoothly on itself. The engines roared. A moment. Another, the deck below, was replaced by the gray waters of the ocean, but the car had already leaned on the air and soared into the sky. There was no catastrophe. Some of our viewers may ask the question, if the airplane has enough space to take off and the takeoff is not from the very beginning of the deck, why do we need some kind of air finisher to land the airplane? Isn't there enough room without it for the airplane to stop on its own? No, there isn't enough. For one thing, the landing speed of an airplane is always higher than its takeoff speed. That's understandable. When the airplane reaches takeoff speed, it pulls away from the ground. But if at this speed the car flies to the airfield, then barely reducing it will simply fall to the ground uncontrollable piece of metal. Second, on an aircraft carrier, airplanes are pushed by a catapult on takeoff, adding to its speed. Without it, the length of the carrier deck is not enough, much less land the plane. You need something that acts like a catapult, only in reverse. It's called an aero finisher. It's a system of cables that are stretched across the deck of an aircraft carrier. When an airplane lands, its tail hook or otherwise hooks onto one of the cables, and the cable, using hydraulic or electromagnetic mechanisms, begins to break the airplane sharply. The cable itself is coiled from special drums located on the sides of the runway below the deck. After the final stop of the machine, the deck worker unhooks the hook from the cable and it's automatically rewound on the drums. As you can see from the operation of this device, the most critical part of the aero finisher is the cable. It's repeatedly exposed to strong dynamic loads and wear. Plus, it's exposed to an aggressive marine environment, therefore the rope is made of high-strength wear-resistant steel or special alloys. Its diameter can vary from 1.5 to 2.5 inches. This is approximately 38 to 63 millimeters, depending on the type of aircraft the aircraft carrier is working with. The air finisher, as a very important aircraft carrier system whose operation directly affects the safety of the crew, undergoes regular inspections and checks. Special sensors monitor the conditions of cables and other elements of the system and can warn the crew of possible malfunctions. A strict record is kept of how many times a particular tether has stopped airplanes. Depending on the cable material and operating conditions, it's replaced after 10 to 30,000 landings. 
But despite the well-thought-out design, regular inspections and checks, incidents happen to the aero finisher as you already know. If an air finisher cable breaks while landing on an aircraft carrier, several scenarios are possible, depending on at what stage of the landing it happened and how well the other safety systems worked. The first scenario is that the cable breaks when the airplane's hook is engaged. This is the most dangerous scenario because at this point the airplane is already starting to decelerate, but the sudden loss of the cable will cause the braking to stop abruptly. The pilot in this situation needs to react quickly and apply an afterburner for takeoff to avoid rolling off the deck. If the airplane fails to accelerate and take off again in time, it may roll into the sea. This is a guaranteed loss of the machine and a major threat to the pilot's life. That's exactly what happened on March 18, 2016, when a long-range aircraft landed on the aircraft carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, E2C Hawkeye Long Range Radar Detection Aircraft. The pilot and machine survived, but a broken cable injured eight crewmen, some of them severely. The second possibility is that the cable breaks when it touches the deck beforehand. If the cable breaks even before it touches the deck, i.e. from its preliminary tension, the airplane will continue to move at high speed. But here the pilot has a few moments more time to prepare and make an emergency takeoff. On modern aircraft carriers, there's a special system that allows you to automatically monitor the situation and, if necessary, issue a command for afterburner. In this case, there's a chance that the aircraft will be able to return to the air without incident. The third option is the inability to engage the tether. In some cases, if the tether does not break, but for some reason it cannot be snagged, for example, due to a technical malfunction or pilot error, the airplane will also continue on the deck. In such a case, the same emergency takeoff procedures apply. A more severe case has also been recorded when the cable breaks. In the same year, 2016, the Russian heavy aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov was cruising in the Mediterranean Sea. As you may recall, Russia was then embroiled in the Syrian civil war. On December 5th, while landing a Su-33 deck fighter on the cruiser, a cable broke, the pilot failed to retake off, and the machine crashed into the water. Fortunately, the pilot managed to eject and was rescued. However, the loss of the expensive fighter became a serious setback for the Russian Navy and damaged several tens of millions of dollars. And before that, there was a comical incident. The day before, on November 21st, two MiG-29K fighters took off from the Admiral Kuznetsov. When landing the first fighter, it got tangled in the cable. While the incident was being eliminated, the second fighter ran out of fuel and the pilot was forced to eject. Earlier incidents involving malfunctioning air finishers are also known, and there are probably even more cases unknown to the general public. After all, no one likes to publicize punctures in their work, including the military. And if there's an opportunity to hide it from journalists, they hide it. To prevent catastrophic consequences of a cable break, pilots conduct regular training on emergency takeoffs. This is a standard procedure known as a bolter, a stall landing. In the event of a failed or broken cable, the pilot must engage the afterburner, retract the flaps, and take off again to make another landing approach. In addition, modern aircraft carriers are equipped with an optical indication system that helps pilots accurately calculate the moment of touchdown. If the landing is not perfect, the system alerts the pilot to immediately take maneuvers to take off again. Aircraft carriers also have special defense mechanisms in case of such situations. One of them is the so-called emergency stop barrier. This is a system consisting of elastic bands or nets that can hold an airplane if it's unable to stop with an aero finisher. However, barriers are a last resort and their use can cause damage to the airplane. And for at least the last 10 years, there's never been any official word that such a system has been utilized. The U.S. as a leader in aircraft carrier development is continuously improving takeoff and landing systems. After all, it's not only the safety of the crew, but also the ability to significantly increase the combat power of the ship. So this indicator is determined not only by the model and the number of fighters on its board, but also by how many aircraft per day can take off and land from its board. The world's first airplane landing on the deck of a ship was performed in the United States in 1911. Pilot Eugene Eli landed his Curtis biplane on a specially equipped deck of the U.S. cruiser USS Pennsylvania, on which an aero finisher was installed. The simplest design was used for this purpose, a rope to the ends of which sandbags were tied. 
The airplane hooked onto the rope, pulled it, and dragged the sandbags behind it, slowing the speed of the airplane. One of the first significant steps in the development of air finishers was the advent of hydraulic systems. These systems began to be used in the 1930s. The design was based on a cable which, when hooked by the airplane's hook, breaks its movement by transferring energy to hydraulic cylinders. The fluid inside the cylinders absorbed the kinetic energy, slowing the airplane. Such systems became the standard for several decades, providing high reliability and relative ease of operation. By the 1940s, aircraft carriers were using air finishers capable of stopping increasingly heavier and faster aircraft. An important milestone was the introduction of multi-tether systems which provided additional safety. If the airplane failed to catch the first rope, other ropes followed, increasing the chances of a successful stop. This system was quite reliable and was used for decades, providing a reasonably smooth stop for the airplane. But on the newest next-generation aircraft carrier, the Gerald R. Ford, the air finishers already have a radically new design. No, the cable in them remains, but instead of hydraulic dampers, they use a combination of electric motors and hydraulic components for precise braking control. The system is called Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG for short. It's equipped with an advanced control system that adjusts the braking system in real time depending on aircraft parameters. This allows for smooth and safe deceleration, minimizing stress on the aircraft structure and the carrier itself. Unlike traditional systems based on hydraulics alone, AAG allows for a more flexible adjustment of braking force depending on the weight and speed of the aircraft. A key advantage of such advanced systems is the ability to work with a variety of aircraft types. The AAG is adaptable for light unmanned aircraft as well as heavy fighter or bomber aircraft. This is especially important in the modernization of air groups where different models of aircraft may be on an aircraft carrier. And very important, the AAG electromagnetic system consumes less power and requires less recovery time between landings compared to the hydraulic system on the Nimitz. This increases the overall performance of the carrier and reduces time delays in the aircraft landing process. Combined with the also fundamentally different electromagnetically powered catapults, the USS Gerald R. Ford can release and land 160 aircraft per day compared to 120 for the USS Nimitz. That's one-third more. 40 additional modern fighters like the F-35 Lightning II are a huge power. For example, Russia uses only 100 fighters a day in its war against Ukraine on a front of several thousand kilometers. That is, one Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier can provide one and a half times as many fighters as all of Russia. Moreover, if necessary, the USS Gerald R. Ford is capable of launching 220 fighters. And a big part of such a staggering figure belongs to the air finisher. Of course, not everything is going smoothly so far. It's often been brought up in the media that the new catapults and air finishers on the Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier are facing technical problems and occasional failures. However, it's worth remembering that these are revolutionary technologies and such difficulties are natural for the first stages of implementation. Undoubtedly, over time, these systems will be perfected. After all, the efforts are more than justified. At stake is an increase in the combat capabilities of the aircraft carrier by as much as a third due to the increase in the number of aircraft takeoffs and landings per day. In addition, the presence of such air finishers in the future will allow having on board the aircraft carrier heavier and faster fighters of the sixth generation as well as relatively light unmanned aircraft as their wingmen. And it won't require any modernization of anything on the ship. So with the addition of an aircraft carrier like the Gerald R. Ford to the U.S. Navy, the U.S. has taken a big step toward increasing its power, as well as quickly adapting aircraft carriers to new types of weapons, such as sixth-generation fighters and drones. Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked what you saw and learned something new for yourself, please click thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. This will help us create more interesting content. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to click on the bell icon to avoid missing our next video.